guys, I'm back. I've got a new video for you today. Um, so back in 2010, I made a uh, St. Patrick's Day themed ornament. Um, and it has turned into one of my most popular videos uh, on my channel. Uh, and so I've decided to go ahead and redo that same basic design uh, with actual tutorial steps for you. And um, so I decided to do it in more of a general, um, in a more general theme that you can switch up and make your own. Um, it's this one. And I did this uh, tutorial in the pink. Um, because I realized um, that for some reason all of the videos that I've done recently are blue ornaments and I don't know why um, I guess I just like the color blue um, I don't know but uh, I did make I did make the same ornament in blue uh, so you could just see a variation of it and there is my blue variation but you're gonna actually see the tutorial uh, with the pink today so um, anyway um, yeah that's it and let's get started with the tutorial okay so the tools that you need to make this ornament are either a ballpoint pen or a permanent fine tip marker like a sharpie a calculator a measuring tape in centimeters, some uh, fabric scissors, a cigarette lighter, some liquid whiteout, some craft glue, and some paint brushes and something to uh, stir your, your glitter paint with. Okay, as for materials, you'll need a smooth foam ball like this one. Um, any size will do. This ornament um, works for any size smooth foam ball. You'll need several different types of ribbon. I've got four uh, types of ribbon here. Um, two in the same color in white. Um, one is a nine millimeter wide ribbon and the other one is six millimeters wide. And then I also have a six millimeter wide pink satin and a six millimeter wide uh, organza ribbon. Alright, so I also have some five millimeter metallic pink slightly cupped sequins that I bought at Cartwrights and I'll put a link to that down in the description. In fact, I'll put a link to all of the stuff that you can buy online here in the descri description. These are pale pink five millimeter sequins. They're also slightly cupped. I have no idea where I bought those. I bought them such a long time ago. Um, here I have some bicone beads, pink acrylic bicone beads, and I'm not really sure the size on those, um, and I don't remember where I bought them. Um, then I have some seed beads, and these I bought at Cartwrights, um, and they're very, very tiny, as you can see. Um, and let's see, what else do you have? Okay, and I have two sizes of sequin, sequin pins. These are half inch sequin pins, and I got these at Cartwrights. And these are three fourths of an inch. I also got those at Cartwrights. Then you'll need some fine grained glitter. The finer grained, the better. Um, and some glitter glue. Um, I believe I bought that glitter glue years ago at Hobby Lobby, um, probably like over five years ago. And my little glitter packet, I, I cannot remember where I bought that. I've had it for so long. You'll also need two large sequin shapes. And these I got at Idea to Sequins on Etsy. You'll need some corsage pins. I've got two kinds here. I've got two just regular round head pearls and two teardrop type pearls. I believe the regular pearls head ones are an inch and a half and the teardrop pearl ones are two inches. And last but not least, you'll need a couple of pearl beads. I believe these are about seven millimeters in diameter. So the first thing you need to do is mark the north and south pole of your ball. And I'm sorry here, the 
brightness and contrast are all kind of messed up and you may not be able to see. Um, but this ball actually has some factory markings, which is why I'm so easily able to mark the North and the South Pole. Um, if you're ball doesn't have factory markings uh, for North, South Pole, and an equator. Um, I have another video which I will put a link to to teach you how to do that. Okay, now the color on my video has adjusted itself. Um, I'm going to do some math. We are going to draw um, eight points around the equator of our ball. So to do that um, I'll need a little bit of math and I've actually already gone ahead and done the calculations um, with my calculator. So I'm just going to show you here what those are. So the diameter uh, of my ball is seven centimeters and I want to make a simple eight division. Okay, that's the eight points around the equator of the ball. So to do that, I need to find the circumference of my ball and the circumference equals seven, which is the diameter, times pi, which is 3.14. And when I do the calculations, I get 21.98, which is the circumference of my ball. Next, I'm going to divide 21.98 divided by 4. This is the easiest way to do it. Um, I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to divide it in 4 first, which rounds out to about 5.5. .5. And I'm going to mark four points around the ball first. And you can start by putting just mark, just putting a mark anywhere on the equator, and then taking your measuring tape and following following along the factory equator marking, measure out. 5.5 centimeters. And we'll do this all the way around the ball until we have four equidistant points. Okay, now I've got four points drawn. Of course, now I want eight. So I'm going to divide 5.5 divided by two. And that equals 2.75. I'm going to mark the distance 2.75 between each of those previous markings that I just made. Okay? So there I'm marking 2.75 and that's halfway between um, the, the two other points. And I'm moving along, turning the ball 90 degrees and marking the next point. And I'm just going to continue around until eventually I will have eight equidistant points around the equator of my ball. Okay, now I'm just gonna count and make sure I have all eight points drawn and I do. So now we can move on to the next step. Okay, now I'm gonna draw a point between my North Pole and one of those points that I drew in the equator. And actually, um, the distance between my North Pole and my equator is 5.5. So I already know what half of that is. It's 2.75. So I'm just marking 2.75. And I'm doing that for the north uh, half of the ball and the south half of the ball. 
Next, I'm going to turn the ball 90 degrees, skipping over one of my points. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I had to think about it there <laughs> for a minute, <laughs> what I was doing. And I'm going to do the same thing, just marking the halfway point between the North Pole and the Equator and the South Pole and the Equator. And moving again 90 degrees, skipping over one line uh, or one point on the Equator. And marking those points again. And you're just going to do that um, until you've got four halfway or midpoints or whatever you want to call them um, uh, between the North Pole and the South Pole. And I'm going to speed up the video here a little bit just to save on time. And actually, it looks like I made a little bit of a mistake right there. Um, measured my point slightly wrong. So this is where the liquid whiteout comes in handy. You can just put a little dot of whiteout over the top of your mistake and let it dry. I'm going to blow on it a little bit. Let it dry. Um, and then you know that that's not your proper mark. So, all right, so here's the view from uh, one of the poles, uh, from the South Pole, and here's the view from the North Pole, and you can see those four points um, that you just drew. Okay, now, I'm gonna take some of my short pins. These are the one uh, the, sorry, the half inch pins. And I'm going to put some pins in just to sort as kind of a place marker because this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing. So I'm putting it on one side where I didn't mark those midway points. And then I'm turning it um, 180 degrees on the opposite side and I'm marking, um, and I, sorry, I'm putting the pin um, in the mark. And then on the other two points, that I haven't um, measured anything out on yet. Instead of marking just a halfway point, I'm actually going to be marking halfway points and quarter points, um, if that makes sense. Um, so I marked a halfway point right there. Now you can see um, I've got three dots on that side instead of just two. And my ball will not stay where I want it to. I'm going to have to fix that problem. All right, and I'm going to divide that 2.75. That's the point, the, the distance to the halfway point. And I'm going to get 1.37. And then I'm going to measure between where was I? Oh, there I was. Okay. Now I'm going to measure between the North Pole and the Midway Point, and I'm going to measure halfway 1.37. Right there. And then I'm going to move down and measure between the Midpoint and the Equator. 1.37. Okay, so now I've got I've got it marked in quarters instead of just halves. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing on that same line marking between the midpoint or I'm going to make a midpoint and then I'm going to mark between the midpoint and the south pole and the midpoint and the equator. Okay. So there's what that looks like. 
and you've got a bunch of dots. Now we're going to turn it over and 180 degrees and on the opposite side we're going to do the exact same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead since you've already seen what we're doing um, to save on time. Okay, now it's time to get out the thinner width of your ribbon and your two sizes of sequin pins and your cigarette lighter, if you have one. If you don't have a cigarette lighter and you don't want to do this, that's fine. Basically, I'm just using it to melt the ends of my ribbon to prevent the ribbon from fraying. That's that's all I'm doing with it. Um, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I, I like to do that. Let me quick uh, show you a close-up of the two pins. You can see um, one is longer, it's three-fourths of an inch, and the other is a half an inch. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using both sizes. Um, and there is a reason for this, um, I'll, and I'll explain it in a moment. So first you're going to choose one of the lines that has the midpoint uh, the the north and south midpoint and the equator drawn. Um, and you'll take a long pin and I just can't seem to get a hold of it. There we go. And you'll pin it to the top. Now you don't want to pin it directly into the North Pole. You want to sort of uh, pin it a little bit off to the side of the North Pole. Um, because we have to put a pin in the North Pole later um, and we need space to do that. So, all right, and then you're going to take a short pin and pin it into the equator point right there. And just make sure it's nice and straight. And I'm kind of a perfectionist sometimes. And then you'll continue smoothing the ribbon down to where the South Pole is and you're going to pin the ribbon of the South Pole off to the side and you'll do it on both sides of the South Pole and not directly into the South Pole because like with the North Pole we need to put another pin in the North Pole later and we're going to need space to do that. So, all right, and you're going to continue around to the other side and smoothing your ribbon over over the points that we drew and making sure it is nice and straight and for some reason with this line I'm having a hard time getting it nice and straight okay that looks good and I'll take a short pin and I'll pin it into the equator and you'll see that we've got we've we haven't put pins in the midpoint um, and you can see the midpoints through the white ribbon that we're using and we want to see those midpoints through the ribbon that we're using um, because that those those black dots that we can see through the ribbon are where we're gonna put um, our beads later all right, so then I'm gonna cut it at the top and melt the ends there to prevent from fraying and then pin it with one of my long pins back to the North Pole. Okay, now I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and perpendicular to that line of ribbon that we just pinned on, we're going to pin our next line of ribbon. And we're going to do this exactly in the same way that we did before, pinning with a long pin to the top and a short pin in the equator. and a long pin 
at the South Pole. And I'm going to skip ahead here to save on time. Okay, so now we've finished pinning all of our white satin 6 millimeter ribbon to the ball. And now it's time to go ahead and pin our 9 millimeter ribbon to the ball. And we're pretty much going to pin this in the exact same way that we pinned the other ribbon. We're going to start with a long pin at the top and we're going to smooth it down making sure all of those points are visible right in the middle and I'm going ahead and anchoring it down there in the south pole and then taking a short pin and pinning it to the equator. Okay, and then I'm just going to continue, continue around to the other side and I'm going to just cut it off right there melt the end use a long pin anchor it at the top and then use our short pin again on the equator. Oh, I forgot I have to put another pin at the south. I like to put two pins at the south um, to anchor it. Okay, and so that's what that looks like. Now we still have those pins in those lonely points there and those lonely points there are now going to become the center focal point of our ball and of course you know if you get your ribbon um, a little bit too long up there at the top you can always just trim it off a little bit no big deal all right, now it's time to start the sequins and you'll take your short sequin pins and you'll thread on a small seed bead and then you'll thread on one of your pink sequins like this. I like to do them with the cup facing out. Then you'll dip it in glue and you'll pin it right to where the ribbon meets up at the top. And you'll find that your ball will start rolling away from you um, because the weight distribution. So it's best to get something that you can put the ball on top of so it doesn't constantly roll away from you every time you put it down. Okay, so I'm speeding the video up a little bit here um, because I think you get the idea of how we're pinning the sequins to the ball. Um, now I just want you to get an idea of the pattern and basically we are just pinning the sequins individually all along the outline of the white ribbon that we've already pinned to the ball. And this is a painstaking process um, it does take a lot of time. I suggest um, doing it in short bits, like 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. If you have uh, a foam ball that's particularly hard, um, you may want to use a thimble to push all of those pins in. Um, otherwise, you're going to get callus on your, on your fingers. Um, that used to happen to me all the time until I found a, a softer foam ball to work with. Um, and you just keep on pinning along as you can see we're just pinning right along the edge of that white ribbon and I'm trying not to cover up too much of the ribbon I'm just trying to pin it to where the edge of the sequins is just touching the ribbon and the sequin above it so that there's no gaps and you can't see the foam underneath um, but um, 
but yeah, I think you get the point. So, um, and we just go down that line there and we're going to go back up the other side. And if you need to do a little bit of adjusting uh, to the sequins, I suggest you do it before the glue dries. Um, also, if you don't have the shorter pins, I know some people only have longer pins. That's fine. You can use just longer pins. Um, but you, you start getting into the problem where the pins start running into each other um, depending on the size of your ball and depending on the size of your pins. So I really do suggest having a shorter pin. And there we are. We've just finished that and I'm going to turn it and start down the next section. And I'm basically just going to keep pinning all of my pink, pink sequins outlining all of the white ribbon. Okay, so I've skipped ahead and I've finished all of the sequins and I just love it. It's so sparkly. Um, that's another reason why I always pin with the sequins facing out, uh, with the cup of the sequin facing out and up. Um, because it catches the light and it just makes it really pretty and sparkly. All right, so now we're going to do the glitter, um, the glitter glue, um, which I like to call this glitter paint, what I'm doing here. I'm taking regular silver glitter glue, and I bought this years and years and years ago at the Hobby Lobby uh, in Texas, I think. Gosh, it's been so many years since I lived in Texas. Uh, so this is actually really old. I can't believe... Uh, how well this lasted. Um, my other glitter glue that I bought uh, at the same time, um, it 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 didn't it didn't last. Um, the separate the glue and the glitter separated out from each other, and it was just disgusting. And and I can't use it anymore. I had to throw it away. But for some reason, the silver one did really well. Okay, um, I'm just gonna open my little package of fine glitter. And I'm just going to put it in there. Oops, try not to spill. I only have so much. And I'm going to take my little stirring stick. This is just a little uh, coffee stirring thing that, um, that I picked up at a coffee shop. I just took a little extra one, and it does really well for glitter glue. Um, and I'm just going to keep adding more of my glitter to the glue and then adding a little bit more glue as well um, just and keep stirring it up just until I'm satisfied with the consistency. I don't want it to be too runny and I don't want it to be too thick either. Um, it's, it's hard to explain um, the consistency. Uh, the best way I can explain it is if it's if you've got too much glue then it's too runny and it kind of drips down the sides. But if it's too thick, it's kind of chunky when you're trying to apply it to the ball. So you just kind of have to play with it and feel it out um, for the consistency that you like. Um, and once you kind of figure out the consistency you like, then the, the next time you do it, um, it'll get easier and easier. So I haven't actually made a glitter ornament in a long time. And originally I was going to try to make uh, my own glitter glue with just clear synthetic glue and this pink, um, this dark pink glitter. But... I looked everywhere and I could not find my clear synthetic glue. Um, and so I decided to go ahead and mix it with the silver. It's actually a lot easier 
to mix it with the with the silver or gold or iridescent glitter glue because you know that the glitter glue that the glue base itself is going to dry clear that's what it's made for it's made not the glue itself is not made to show up it's made to dry clear and then you just have the glitter base showing through um, with the clear synthetic glue it's a little bit harder uh, when you're buying the clear glue uh, choosing the product and the clear glue that I found I actually bought here in Japan at the 100 yen store um, very very cheaply and it was just this clear synthetic glue and I thought why the heck not I'll give it a try and it worked really really well um, but I've had other people say oh no you know I, I tried something and it didn't work it didn't dry clear so it's just kind of trial and error and um, yeah good luck with it there's uh, more information about making this glitter glue slash glitter paint on my website and I will add a link below uh, to that page so you can read more about it there I have some um, some of my followers have actually um, given me some other ways of making this glitter glue or glitter paint so okay now I've gotten my uh, paintbrush out and I'm using a smaller paintbrush and I'm just kind of globbing on that glue um, in the center there and then spreading it out. And it might be a little bit hard to tell, um, but I'm putting on a pretty thick layer of the stuff. Um, the thicker the layer, the more opaque it's going to be. Uh, even it's sort of even if you're putting it on and it's kind of lumpy, uh, when it dries, it's going to dry flat, uh, and it won't be lumpy anymore. Um, but it will be opaque. So um, if you put a thin layer on, you let it dry. You're going to have to put a second layer on and a third layer, depending on how opaque you want it. So I suggest trying to get a really thick layer of glue on there at first, then letting it dry completely overnight. Um, and you'll see that that um, the that it really is opaque. Um, I don't know how else to say it. Okay, <laughs> so um, a, a question I get a lot of times from people is, why don't I just paint my ornaments first, let them dry, and then put all of the ribbon and sequins and everything on? Well, the reason for this ornament, um, the reason why I'm doing it this way for this ornament is because I wanted to mark those points um, underneath of the white ribbon that I could see through the white ribbon so that I know where to put my bicone bead uh, pin my bicone beads onto the ribbon um, and also because I'm using white and you can see through it um, the the glitter would show through the white ribbon um, and it would look pink and that's just not what I wanted to do if you um, are kind of delicate with it you use a small paintbrush um, and you don't try to go too fast um, practice also helps, but I know for some some of you, this might be the first time you're doing this. Um, just try to go slowly and, um, you know, try to keep the shaky hands to a minimum if you can, and you won't get too much glitter on the sequins. If you get a little bit of glitter on the sequins, they're so close, or, well, at least for this ornament that I'm making here, they're so close in color that you can't hardly even tell. Um, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter all of all that much um, if you are using a glitter that is a very different color than your sequin it might make a difference and you might want to take just a little q-tip or something and just um, clean up the sequins when you're done painting on your glitter and again I'm just gonna speed up the video a little bit here so we can quickly get to the next part and there's just one thing I need to show you 
about painting the glitter on the big section. And in the large section here, remember we put that pin in the center? And that was basically just to show you, okay, this is where ribbon does not go where this pin is. That was what the whole thing, that, that whole purpose of that pin in there. Um, <laughs> for me, it was just a lot easier for me to, to keep everything straight that way. Um, and now I'm going to take one of my pale pink sequins and I'm going to pin it into the center there just right back in that same hole where the other pin was. And this basically this pale pink sequence is just going to be a little throwaway thing. Um, it's just kind of a, a marker um, it, because I don't, I don't want to paint over that point uh, that I made um, because that is the exact center where the large embellishment sequin is going to go. So you, know, you got to be careful here um, when you're picking this up. You don't want to stick your fingers in where you already painted already. And basically, I'm just painting around that center. And that sequin is there just so just so I don't paint over um, that point. Gosh, I hope that makes sense. I think it does. I think you'll you'll see when I'm when everything is dry and finished and I take it out, you'll understand why I've done what I've done. So um, and this is gonna take a while to get on a nice thick layer of this. Um, and this video is already getting pretty long. We're already over 30 minutes here. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. Okay, so now it is about, I would say, I, I let one side dry overnight. And then I painted the other side and I let the other side dry for like five, six hours, however long it took. Um, and then I'm taking out those place marker sequins that I put in the middle there. And this is what it looks like when it's all dry. And it looks pretty good. It's very sparkly. I really like the way the silver sequins uh, and the, the colored sequins mix together. It sort of, it adds like an extra dimension to it. It's I think it's really, really pretty. So, all right, now we're going to put on the center embellishment and these large sequin shapes I bought at Idea to Sequins, which is a shop on Etsy. They're located in India and they were very, very nice uh, when I was communicating with them last year when I bought these. Um, they have some really, really neat shapes. Um, so if you're looking for large shapes, I really suggest you go there and take a look. Okay, now I'm getting one of my dark pink sequins, and instead of pinning it cup facing up, I'm doing cup facing down. So it sort of forms to the 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 bump in the center of this large sequins. Um, and this is on one of my round pearl head pins. You can see that there. Okay. And then I've got to get some glue. And that's actually, I just pulled off the old glue that I was using the day before. I just pulled that right off um, so I can put some new glue on there. That little tray is just, um, it's part of a, a package of beads that I bought. It's just that little plastic packaging part. Um, I always keep the, the garbage um, to recycle to use for things like uh, a glue tray or something like that. Um, no, no need to buy something new. We can, you can just use the pl plastic that comes on the packaging. So, All right, so I put some glue on that, and I'm just pinning it right to the center there. 
and then I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I think for these center embellishment pieces, I really want to get a really nice big glob of glue. Um, because if you don't get enough glue, they tend to sort of spin around uh, when 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 knocked, you know, when knocked around, that the center embellishment will kind of spin around um, if you haven't gotten enough glue on there to hold it down. So, and I just make sure, adjust it, make sure you got your pin in there straight, make sure you have it in the orientation you want it and it looks pretty good so now I think it's time to move on to the beads okay so now it's time to pin on the beads and we're first gonna pin on the beads on the thick ribbon and I'm gonna thread a bicone bead and a pale pink sequin onto one of my longer pins like this and then I'll dip it in some glue and find one of those black points um, that you can see through the ribbon and pin the bead, the sequin and bead, right onto that point. Now it might be able, difficult to see the points on film, um, but when you're actually making it, um, you will definitely be able to see those black points through the white ribbon. And if you decide to use a darker color ribbon where you can't see those points through it, um, you're just gonna you're just gonna have to eyeball it. You're just gonna have to um, use your best judgment and figure it out. Um, and actually, I, I do it that way a lot of the time. I often um, don't mark the points like this. I just uh, I just thought it was a good way to keep everything nice and even. Okay, then at the equator, you had that um, short pin that was anchoring it. And so I removed the short pin. And now I'm going to put a bead with the longer pin in where that short pin was. And the reason why I used a short pin was that um, if you use a long pin, and then you take the pin out and you put the bead on and then you put the long pin back in, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not tight and secure in there. That's why I use the shorter pin. I, um, the glue does help, but um, the more, uh, it, it's best, the best grip is when you first put the pin in once. Once you take the pin out of the hole and then you put it back in, um, it kind of loses, the, the foam kind of loses its grip on the pin. And I'm just basically, um, just keep pinning your bicone beads and, and pale pink sequin all the way around that thick piece of ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead here to save on time uh, since I think you get the idea of what we're doing. Now all of my bicone beads are pinned around the thick ribbon just like that and now I'm gonna pin some beads on the thin ribbon and on the 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 thin ribbon uh, I'm not gonna use the sequin, the pale pink sequin, because uh, there's just not any space. I'm just going to use a bead um, on a longer pin. So um, the first thing I did was remove that anchor pin that I had there and I'm going to replace it with a bicone bead and just like that. And once again, I have to look for that mark. It might be a little hard to see. Got to find the right light. There we go. There, maybe not. Gosh, that's hard to see. Sometimes, um, if you can, 
if, if you're watching this whole thing before you actually are making the, the ornament itself, um, I suggest trying to make those points dark so you can actually see them through the ribbon. Um, it's a little it's a little annoying to try to find them if you make them too faint. So, okay, and then we're gonna turn and do the same thing on the next thinner ribbon. Okay, and I think once again, I think you get the idea of what we're doing. So I'm gonna skip ahead. All right, so now all of our bicone beads are pinned. And here is the almost finished product. The only thing we have left to do now is to pin the bottom cap on and the, the bow at the top. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we can get out the our two uh, teardrop shaped pearl head corsage pins um, and our two pearl beads. And also we'll need two large sequins. Um, or if you want, you can use a bead cap as well. That's fine. But for this one, I'm going to go ahead and use just kind of a large sequence. I think these are about a centimeter in diameter, um, pink hologram sequence. And I didn't have, I didn't show these at the beginning when I was showing you the, the materials that you need. I totally forgot about them. Um, I did add a little annotation uh, that you needed them, but I'm sorry, I forgot to show them. But here they are now. Also at this point, um, we'll need to cut our ribbon for our bow. And rather than go through all the steps to making a bow, um, I actually have another video specifically dedicated to making a bow. So rather than going through all of this again, because it'll just take another, it might take another 10 to 20 minutes to show you all the steps for making a bow, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that part and if you want to learn how to make a bow, go ahead and follow the link here or the link down in the description and um, you can learn how to make a bow that way. So, and um, just to mention that the bow that we're gonna be using, we're having, uh, we're using three different colors of ribbon in our bow and I'm gonna have four loops of each. So it's going to be Let's see what that, what is that? Four times three, it's gonna be 12 loop bow, okay? Um, yeah, so um, go ahead and follow that link if you want to learn the, the, excuse me, learn the specifics of making a bow. Okay, so um, I've finished with the bow now and just trying to get it adjusted to the way I want it to look. And I'm turning my ball so that the North Pole is facing me. And get a nice glob of glue there. And I'm just pinning all of that bow and everything right to the North Pole. This is why we didn't put those anchor pins uh, for the ribbon uh, right to the center, um, right into the North Pole. We needed that space for this, um, this top pin with your bow and you'll just want to adjust your bow um, and adjust the hanging ribbon to where you want it and you may want to put in some extra pins um, just to anchor everything down um, so it doesn't move but I'm I'm not gonna do that this time I'm just gonna leave it as it is so it looks pretty good and then last but not least we're gonna put in our bottom cap I like to call them it's just um, the bead and the sequin at the bottom. And you'll want to get a nice, nice amount of glue. Um, not too much so it spills over, but enough to where it's really, really anchored in there well. You'll just pin that straight to your south pole. And yeah, that looks pretty good. We're done. Yay. All right. 
So this is what it looks like. Oops. Center embellishment has spent his spun, you know, not got knocked around there. Um, and, and it'll do that until the glue dries enough. Um, so probably from now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set it down, leave it be, stop handling it, um, and let all the glue dry before but you know, before I put it on display or get ready to sell it. So anyway, okay, that is it. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, please leave me lots of comments. Um, please, if you have any questions, feel free. Um, you can just leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Or you can always email me, go to my website, my email is there and I'm always willing to answer any questions. So thanks again for watching. See you next time. Bye.